Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, according to a new survey, the average family will spend $661 per child on back to school shopping. Here to share ways to make your money go further, we welcome certified financial educator Steve Siebold. Hi, Steve. Hi, Helen. That is a lot of money. And that is a lot of money. It's really gone up in the last 30 years. Yeah, it's crazy. But you have some tips for us on how we can save a little bit of money. And the first one is I understand that some states have a tax-free holiday, which I'd never heard of before. Yeah, they do. Of course, Oregon, you guys don't have a sales tax, so it doesn't yeah. really apply. So you get to but it, take But in Washington, it, yeah, in Washington, we have viewers in Washington. So, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, so check on, go to Google and check on uh, when Washington has their, their tax-free holiday, and you can save some money. Okay, and then you like comparison shopping, which makes sense. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing when you do comparison shopping how you can save money. I mean, it's it's just it, it's not a little bit of money. The other day we had gas that was fifty cents higher, about two blocks away. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, um, I would think that just looking at um, if you can go online to the different stores that are selling uh, school supplies, and a lot of them are having sales. Absolutely, yeah. Do your research. Uh, they're always having different sales. It's so competitive right now, especially with inflation being as high as it is. Uh, the competition is fierce, so that helps all of us, uh, you know, save some money in the long run. And you like folks to buy in bulk. Yeah, if you can buy in bulk, if you've got three or four kids or two kids and you can buy in bulk, um, I mean, do it. It's, it just it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and stick to the list. Stick to the list. Don't go off the list. That's the key, right? Easier said than done. But uh, yeah, make a list, do your research in advance, and then stick to it. Stick to the list and also stick to the budget. Yeah. I was uh, listening to Good Morning America this morning. They talked about how, like school notebooks, if they have plastic on the front, they're much more expensive than the notebooks that just have paper. Yeah, just these little things that you wouldn't really think of. But, yeah. uh, but it, that's why the research really does help. But it's amazing how much money you can save actually just by doing a little homework in advance. Yeah. And tell me about needs versus wants. Well, I, you know, again, the things like brand names. I mean, this has been going on forever, right? It happens with adults, too. Kids want a certain kind of shoe or a certain kind of clothing with a name on it. I think it's a great time to teach them about how Madison Avenue manipulates the general public in America about these brands that are usually made in the same factories right. overseas. Uh, and they're no better. They're just they're just got a little status to them, so they charge twice as much. Good, good, it's a good time, a good time to have a teaching point. Okay, and then um, when you, you say when you're out shopping, you should have the kids or be teaching them about money along the way, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, teach them this is how the real world works. You know, it's one thing to watch television and go online and look at all the, all the again, the, the manipulative advertising that goes on every day and on, on social media and all the rest of it. Teach them to operate in the real world. And it's, it's great if you have endless money, but most of us don't. So we've got to watch every penny and make sure that every penny goes as far as it possibly can. And kids are better off learning this now when they're young than when they get out of college. What are some general thoughts on teaching kids about money in general, let's 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 talk like a sixth grader. Well, that's why uh, Tom Matthews and I, my co-author, wrote this book, How Money Works. We actually wrote it so a 14-year-old could understand it. So just understanding the basics, you know, things like the rule of 72 and the and compound interest and the time value of money, just basic things that you can teach a 10-year-old uh, that'll help them throughout their lives that they won't learn in schools typically. Well, let, let's ask this: a number of parents give their kids, 10-year-old kids, debit cards. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think it's dangerous. I would use yeah. cash. Uh, cash has more pain associated to it when you part with it. And it's an emotional thing. It's not really a, a logical linear thing. But I think when you, you, you give them cash, they feel the difference when it goes out of their hand, whereas a card is just a piece of plastic you throw down. I'd rather see them give a debit card, give them a debit card rather than a credit card, but cash is really a better way to train them. Okay, then I've got this question because my friends and I disagree on this. I always feel like I want to give my nieces and nephews cash in an envelope for their birthday versus sending them something Venmo. I feel like Venmo is just in the air. I totally agree with you 100%. There's Thank you. About cash. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all emotional, as you know, Helen. It, 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 it's completely emotional, but we're emotional creatures, and we operate primarily on emotion, uh, for good, you know, for better or worse. But I think that send, giving them the cash and saying, this is what you have. Once it's gone, it's gone, and don't come back asking for more unless you're going to earn it. Right. Or I would think sending them a check, would, and they'd have to go to a bank, would teach them about the banking system. It can, but, you know, so much now is... Uh, 
is done electronically, Online. as you yeah. mentioned, like Venmo. And yeah, they don't, they don't, I don't think they're ever going to know a world when, when they write a check. I will, time will tell, but you know, it's so electronic, but to your point, these are just ones and zeros as opposed to, you know, the feeling of, of paper cash. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Steve Siebold, thank you so much. Great information. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ellen. You bet. All right. We'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.